Across all the details on the housing market, Rogers Healy, owner and CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies, is with us to break it all down for us. There's no doubt that people must be spooked when rates were 3%, mortgage rates, uh, you know, 6%. Um, it, and the rate at which they've moved higher, I mean, that must have spooked folks. What stats are standing out to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the one that you just said kind of screams at all of us. And I think, you know, effectively, when you double your interest rates over the course of a quarter, you're going to have people that have definitely slowed down their thinker. And I think that, to me, has been, you know, a, a pretty astounding number. And hopefully we're going to see some stabilization pretty soon. I think another thing, too, is thankfully, we actually have more inventory right now. I think that home sales have gone down. You know, over the past few months, I think about three and a half or four percent, but we have more inventory coming on the market because I think people that have been just waiting on the seller side to, you know, make sure they have a new property on the other end of it have actually come to the realization that it might be the best time to go and transact. So, you know, it, it's coming at us fast. We've seen some, you know, pretty big changes, but the demand is still there. And I think that obviously, you know, the market's telling us, you know, what it's telling us, but we still have a lot of demand in cities such as Dallas where People might be able to get a better deal than they did three or four months ago, but the sense of urgency is coupling, you know, with our with our timing because interest rates are still kind of increasing. Were you surprised to see the pending home sales had that surprise jump in May? That not, was a little bit of a rebound, not, I should say. Yeah, I mean, not really. And I and I think that, you know, historically, pre-COVID, our busiest quarters of the year were always the second and the third quarter. And I think that when you see those numbers increase in May, that to me makes it look like we're, get, we're getting back to pre-COVID, you know, trends where COVID, we didn't have really that spring or summer market like we historically did. So we packed it all into the third and fourth quarter for 2020 and 2021. So I think it's going to get more to a traditional real estate market, which I think people are actually going to be really welcoming of, which um, will you know slow things down and give us a, a different so a different dose of reality. Right, and some of that uh, people were attributing to the fact that there it was likely due to a brief pullback in mortgage rates. Um, that's not going to be the case now going forward, though. Um, so while you do have the great selling season, people love to shop in the spring and the summer for new homes, but. Um, they won't have that bring, at least not right the second, the brief, you know, pullback on the mortgage rates. <clears throat> yeah, uh, agreed. I think it's kind of price reduction season as well. June <laughs> has always been a little bit slower month. And I think that towards the end of June, people that maybe listed their properties early to mid-May, and they're still sitting there at that 40 to 50 day mark, which is not, not a long time. But again, the last two years, anything after an hour, why has it not sold? You know, people hit the panic button. But yeah, I think we're going to see the market start to go back to what it was like pre-COVID, except we have twice as many realtors now. So, you know, we're going to have to get creative to, to, to make hay, but, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll play to our favor in the long run. Well, obviously, this is your market. So what's your advice? It's the same advice I've given. You know, I, I heard something a few weeks ago, Barbara Corkin, which I think we talked about last time I was on. She said, just get buy your chips so you can start trading your chips in and, and stacking, you know, onto the next opportunity. But, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, and the mortgage rate at 6% is still not bad. When I got into real estate, mortgage rates were closer to 10% and people were still transacting. So, you know, buying a, a piece of real estate is an, an emotional investment as much as it is a financial one. So if you find a property that makes sense, you might not live there for five years, even if it's two years. Do it, and I think right now capture the falling or capture the fact that mortgage rates are still realistic. In the next 12 to 24 months, if they go back down to two and a half or three percent, if you love where you're at and you still have debt on it, refinance. And that's the real estate game that most people aren't willing to play. But if you can get your head inside that space, the long run will actually play to your advantage. So some people who bought some time ago, a couple of years ago before COVID, probably did really well because their houses have really grown the appreciation of their homes and their investment, even if it's to come down off the highs, it's still right. pretty notable. At this point now, are people buying at the top? I mean, should they not expect that if they pay X, that it's going to be worth more in a year or two? Because that may not be the case, or will it? Look, even if it's a, even if it's appreciating two or three percent a year, it's cheaper than renting. I just saw something on social media before we got on that the average homeowner's net worth is 40 times the average net worth of a renter. And I don't know if that's psychological or if it's just them building equity in real estate, but it's all relative. And people that paid, you know, XYZ pre-COVID 
probably got a better deal than someone who paid for something six months ago. But it's all relative. And I think if you can get into something and start building any kind of equity, even if it's literally emotional, knowing that you own the product, it's going to make you more resourceful, you know, outside of just owning a home. So I, I think that we're going to see some people start to transact. And on top of all that, something that we've talked about multiple times is that rental rates are still at an all time high. People that don't want to go spend four or five dollars a foot renting, they're going to buy in a neighborhood they didn't dream of living in. And that means they're going to sell it shorter than they would if it was their bullseye neighborhood. So I think our trends are going to continue to play to our favor, you know, especially in places where people actually want to live long term, like right here in Dallas, Texas. I think there's definitely the regional situation happening too. I mean, Texas is a hot yeah. spot. The Sun Belt, the whole Sun Belt, Florida. I mean, they, we've definitely seen a lot of um, interest there, and rents are crazy. To your point, Rogers Healy. Right. Nice to see you, owner and CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies. Thanks for joining us on the Thank show. Thank you.